All right, well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the third division. Thank Major Boakman and his team for hosting us out here today, and it's great to be joined by Councilwoman Cindy Fowler, Councilman Rick Backwell, Chief Gwyn biller uh, for what we think is a very important announcement as we at Louisville Metro Government strive every day to make our city safer, stronger, and healthier. And the officers who serve us here in LMPD's third division show up to work every day and put their lives on the line to make that happen, just like other police officers and first responders across the entire city. And I want to thank all of you and all of your colleagues on LMPD and all first responding agencies for that. Public safety is something that we all need to work on together. It can't just be the responsibility of LMPD to ensure a safe city. And just like there is no one cause of crime, there is no one solution to crime, there's no one way to prevent crime. We need to use multiple strategies to prevent violent crime from happening in the first place. That's why we have a multi-pronged approach, things like our deflection program, where we can divert certain 911 calls to other mental health professionals to deal with a, med a mental health crisis. There's group violence intervention, where we're working with people who are on a dangerous path and help them change their lives and prevent more crimes from happening. In addition, my budget that's in front of Metro Council right now calls for uh, record raises for LMPD officers and other first responders like our EMS professionals as well. All of these things work together so that we have full teams of our public safety professionals, which we need. We're over 250 officers short. We're making progress towards that. We're short EMS, EMTs, and paramedics. We're making progress on that front as well. And one other thing that we need to use <coughs> is improved equipment and technology to help our police officers do the difficult job that we ask them to do every day. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Technology is now a critical part of the job of public safety in the years that it might not have been in years past. And we have to understand the technological tools and equipment that exists, what they offer, and how we can legally put them to benefit to keep our city safe. And one of the ways that technology can help is by making it possible to help officers survey the scenes of crimes and accidents or look at things before they happen or while crimes may be in progress. To that end, we've installed more security cameras and lights in our parks and other public spaces. And we need more technology to help us monitor activity that threatens public safety in public safety, in public spaces, like street racing or people riding ATVs and dirt bikes and other spaces that are reserved for pedestrians that are supposed to be safe spaces for people to enjoy. To help deal with these and other challenges, today we're announcing a technology pilot program in each of the eight LMPD divisions. And thanks to a partnership between my office, Metro Council, LMPD, each LMPD division will be receiving a drone and training for up to four officers. They will learn how to deploy the drone when necessary so that officers, for example, can be better prepared when heading into an emergency situation, can respond faster and provide aid to people who've been hurt in accidents or in violent crime, or can better identify people who are in the process of breaking the law and put others in danger in public spaces. In a moment, Chief Gwyn Billeroel and Major will tell you more about how the drones can be used and the parameters of their use under LMPD policy and our law. But right now, I want to thank the Chief, Command Staff, and everyone at LMPD for working with Metro Council, with our office, for making this pilot program possible. We're excited to see the benefits of this and hopefully continue to expand this pilot program in the months and years to come. So to tell us a little bit more about this pilot program and why she and other Metro Council members have supported this, I'd like to introduce our District 14 Councilwoman, Cindy Fowler, and we're also joined by one more Metro Council person. Come on up, Councilman Reed and Weber as well. But ladies and gentlemen, Councilwoman Cindy Fowler. Cindy? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this um, issue with um, dirt bikes and ATVs, um, it has been a real problem in my district. I have lost three constituents in my district um, to this activity. 
and um, so I am very grateful for Chief um, Villarreal's action and uh, motivation to help do something to um, create tools that um, officers can use to better locate um, the offenders that are uh, disrupting um, the Louisville Loop, our park system, but um, I, I think every time uh, Chief Villarreal sees me, she knows what I'm going to be asking, so I'm very appreciative of all, all of her help, and for Councilman Blackwell's interest, we have been working with the majors, um, Major Brock Bokeman and um, the other majors in the third division for the last five years trying to come up with a solution, so I'm very excited and grateful, and I appreciate you being here today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilman Fowler. Another strong advocate for this pilot program is Councilman Rick Blackwell, who represents District 12. And uh, we really appreciate your support, Councilman Blackwell, and excited to have you with us here today. Please share a few words. Thank you. Welcome to District 12. Uh, I want to thank the Major, the Chief, uh, the, the, uh, the Mayor, Mess that up. The mayor, the chief, and the major, and the officers in the third division, and my council partners, Councilwoman Fowler, Councilman Reno Weber, uh, and our constituents who bring the issues to us to begin with. Um, they expect us to have quick responses to the issues that they have, and oftentimes uh, government takes much longer. Uh, as the, the mayor pointed out, there's uh, an approach that has to be taken that is uh, multi pronged, um, and this is just one of them. But I would say to you, um, this is an example of good government uh, and how government ought to work. Uh, presented with challenges, uh, we check out what we can possibly do. We talk with all stakeholders about the possible responses. Uh, the res as I mentioned, constituents give us uh, the information about what they see in the parks and what they see in public spaces. We talk with the county attorney's office, very important to uh, uh, find out what we can legally and uh, do and what parameters we have to put on any uh, solutions that we come up with. Most importantly, we talk with our public safety professionals uh, to see how these things, what might sound like a good idea to us, they have to actually implement. And so we talk with them about how we were able to do that. Uh, we seek funding. Uh, and then ultimately, the pilot projects are an important piece so that you don't go uh, you, we, we want to be responsible with our, our, our funds, and so the pilot program is important for us to, to do a smaller pilot program uh, and actually get some data and be able to see if this, is a, if this is an approach that's going to be working for us. So today I'm really excited that we begin to launch this uh, use of technology. Uh, as, we, as the mayor pointed out, we still have a, a number of police officers, and we want to get to full staff on police officers. And, uh, the mayor's administration is committed to that. The council's committed to that. We're doing what we can to make sure that that happens. But additionally, uh, in the meantime, and also additionally, anytime that we can use technology to enhance uh, what it is that they are trying to do, um, it's a good, it's a win-win for everyone involved. Um, so we hope this drone project, combined with some legislation that we're going to be pushing forward, it's in new business uh, actually for tonight, uh, will give us an opportunity to address some of the issues that Councilwoman Fowler already pointed out to you uh, as, as we move forward. So thank you for being here. Thanks, Clint, Councilman Blackwell. And before we get to our colleagues from LMPD, uh, we're also joined today by Councilman Reno Weber, uh, who is another advocate for this program and would like to share a few words. Councilman? Thank you. And I'm just very grateful to the leadership of Councilwoman Fowler and Councilman Blackwell, who've been really driving this. Uh, also grateful because this issue is so important to the Bardstown Road Corridor that I represent. Um, it's also really an interesting piece where our workforce development pieces intersect with public safety. Uh, I know that in many of JCPS schools there are drone pilot programs. My daughter uh, participated in a pilot at Atherton High School and they were very excited. It was really interesting to hear from some of the officers initially who were skeptical about this and I know at least in the 5th Division I think they had 28 volunteers for this training. Um, so very excited to be a part of these efforts, uh, grateful for all of the leadership uh, that is represented on this stage, and um, thank you for uh, being a part of this. Good morning. We are truly excited that we have such great support from council, from the mayor, and from the community. So thank you 
Councilwoman Fowler, thank you so much for your support and just driving this home and listening and understanding what we need. And Councilman Blackwell, thank you so much for also being behind it and all the other council members that truly say, yes, we need to do this. So with this being said, this is a pilot version for the, the divisions to see, to test out um, the capabilities within the drones. But let me tell you just a snapshot of what we are seeing and what we should be doing as far as public safety because that is our top priority. With the utilization of the drones within the division, we're able to search for our most vulnerable, our children, our elderly who are, have diminished capacity. We're able to, to go over and see traffic collisions and to get a bird's eye view of what is happening. We're able to address this dirt bike issue that we have within our city, ATVs and our street racing violators. We're able to also to assist with water rescues if needed by having the additional technology afforded within the division level. And so I'm super excited that we are in a space now that this city is embracing technology, but truly still holding us accountable as how we're using it to make sure that we're using it in the right way but this is how we move our city forward and for us to have a continuous progressive department and that we're leading the way in public safety by ensuring that we're utilizing every tool affordable to us in order to keep you safe within Louisville and so I have with me some colleagues that are just truly passionate about um, the program I want Major Bachman to come up to speak at the division level as a commander in what he is seeing and how us pushing and giving him the op opportunity to have an additional tool at the patrol level will help us here. And then also too, I have other experts here um, within the drone arena within itself uh, that will come and speak to some of the specifics as you see within the displays here. So again, thank you to council. Thank you for the support. Thank you, Mayor, for allowing us to do what we need to do to keep this city safe and as we continue to be a great department for Louisville. Major Bachman. Yeah, I'm Major Bachman with the LMP's 3rd Division. Um, I see that I've been, I've been here for about a year and I've continuously get complaints and, 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 and constituents within the community who these ATVs are a problem. You, you, can't, you can't enjoy the parks, you can't enjoy the loop anymore. So Councilmember Fowler, Councilmember Blackwell came to me. We sat down and we talked about how effective drones would be. Um, the drones are really a good, great, a great intelligence gathering device so that we could use to identify these specific ATVs, these specific people. We'll use our detective's office to gather that intelligence and try to develop probable cause to, to address these issues. Um, she, Council Member Fowler has been great and Council Member Blackwell have been great and supportive in this. Um, we, we, don't wanna, we don't wanna misuse this technology. This technology is great. Um, it's not a, it's not a track and seek and it's, it's not, it's not a surveillance type thing. It's more of an intelligence gathering thing from our side. It gives us the tools to be able to identify what's going on. Um, and that's within the ATV realm as far as it far exceeds that of the technology is going to give us so much more as far as missing persons, diminished capacity, things like that. Um, when we go, when we go on scene, we can have eyes on scene prior to us arriving to like a dangerous subject or or anything like that, or a 1085 attempt, a wanted person attempt. We can get eyes on scene before we're there and have a better tactical advantage. So that's the beauty of this technology and I'm excited about it. Thank you very much, Major Bachman, Chief, Council members, really appreciate that. We will stop droning on. Come on guys, I had to, I had to. We will stop droning on now and we are happy to take any questions from the media that you all might have about this or other topics, Roberto? Then Josh. Yeah, you had mentioned uh, all the SOPs, parameters, everything that needs to be complied with the way the information has to flow. Can someone sort of talk to what the parameters are around those new stages and, and what would happen later? Right? Yeah, we were just talking about that. You can yeah. please introduce yourself. Yeah. Uh, Travis Hiker, I'm the senior IT manager for LMPD. Um, there are some, there are a lot of regulations, right? The FAA has Part 107, which is the guidelines for commercial use uh, of a drone. Um, uh, being a public safety agency, we have the ability to use a thing called a COA, which would let us self-certify. We as a department have decided that we are going to require all of our pilots to get a Part 107 license. Um, so they will have the same training and the same uh, you know, requirement that a commercial pilot would have to have for a drone. Um, but you can, all of the guidelines for the Part 107 are located uh, on the FAA's website. 
they very closely mirror um, 107 as far as usage and you know limitations. Um, I I don't have the SOP in front of me, but it is posted publicly. You can read it. It's it's out on the website. Mm -hmm. yeah. and the SOPs are online. No, we are purchasing yeah. um, drones. Um, so the, what we have on display today is what we already have, um, that we're already utilizing, but we are purchasing drones that the council um, have supported and purchasing, and then we have other funding that will just tie it all up with the additional pilot training, the certification, um, with all of our new pilots that are gonna be in division. So, yes, sir. We'll develop our own timeline uh, timeline with that, but we will release that data. Because when we're deploying a drone, guess what, it's gonna be automatically attached to a case number as to why we're util utilizing and deploying it. So again, you will have that data. Publicly It'll be publicly available, yes. Yeah. Um, how, how many drones are you looking for? Well, the pilot program is starting off uh, for so that each division has a drone. Uh, and then we're going to see how it works and, and add to it for there. The cost of each drone, do you all remember? Yes, we, uh, for all of them? Right. Yeah, 100000 Training so. and deployment. Yeah. yeah $100,000 for the training cost plus the actual drone cost is this pilot program cost. Yeah. So uh, a, a chunk of it is coming from LMPD's existing budget. Uh, there were also some uh, council allocations made for how much? $48,000 was specifically made from some of the council uh, members, uh, NDF funds as well. Uh, and the remainder of that is coming from um, the LMPD budget. That's right. Well, I'll start and then some, somebody else can chime in. You know, what, what really drove this was, uh, as, as was mentioned earlier, Councilman Fowler, Councilman Blackwell uh, reached out to us about concerns with dirt bikes. For example, in Riverview Park, not far from here, uh, or along the, along the Ohio River on the Louisville Loop, uh, we do not have an effect. This is a more effective way to reduce the amount of people who are illegally using dirt bikes and ATVs in our public spaces in areas that those are not permitted, that are causing danger to others, uh, that are impeding the beneficial use of parks with drones, we can better apprehend those individuals who are doing that and hopefully confiscate the bikes that are being used illegally. Uh, so that, that's how this started. Uh, you heard Major talk about that as a primary use, uh, but in terms of all the other uses uh, and, and the others I can let the Chief talk about. The drone program has been in operation for a while. And so that's why we have a policy. And so um, it's been in operation for a while. We're just expanding it to the division level. Um, again, we always are looking at our policies. We're always looking at best practices, um, but what is suitable and what fits here with Louisville and having those very candid um, and direct conversation with those individuals that have concern. Um, so again, if we need to have an additional conversation with other specific groups as to how we are utilizing the drone program, rolling out the expansion within the divisions, um, then we're open to do that, but it's already been in operation. Um, but again, we're always looking for best practices and how we can, um, do policing in a manner um, that everybody is comfortable and also too that is we're meeting the goal of keeping people safe. 
And so, again, I thank everybody for their assistance today, and I appreciate it and um, the support from the community.